Okay, so this is going to be a brief walk through the Krebs cycle. So first and foremost, the Krebs cycle occurs within the mitochondrial matrix, which is a portion of the mitochondria which contains a lot of enzymes as well as like a liquid solution. Um, and together, these things can uh, produce a lot of different reactions. And so before the Krebs cycle starts, it uh, picks up from glycolysis and there's a step called pyruvate oxidation. And what happens to pyruvate oxidation is that pyruvate is transformed into acetyl-CoA, which is the molecule that actually enters the Krebs cycle. And so how does this occur? Well, a pyruvate is a three-carbon molecule, and so each glucose produces two pyruvates. And so this three-carbon molecule is able to split apart into the necessary compounds. So first of all, a carbon from a, a pyruvate. Um, is released as carbon dioxide. And so, the, yeah, this carbon is taken from a carboxyl group within the pyruvate. And what happens to the two other carbons is that they enter the Krebs cycle. Well, more on that in a second. But before that, um, we have the formation of acetyl-CoA. And so the two compounds that form it are acetate as well as coenzyme A. And so where does acetate come from? Well, acetate, acetate comes from the two other carbons that are oxidized in order to form acetate, and coenzyme A is the enzyme that is used in order to basically cause the pyruvate oxidation in the first place. And within this step, you also have the transformation from NAD plus into NADH, and NADH, as you may know, is the energy carrier molecule. And so, yes, we have our acetyl-CoA entering the cycle right here. And so what happens in step one is that this acetyl-CoA is combined with oxal acetate. And together, these two different compounds are able to form citrate, hence the name citric acid cycle, which is another common name for the Krebs cycle. And so this citrate um, is able to change into its isomer form, which is called isocitrate. And what isocitrate uh, basically does is that when this transformation occurs, you have the um, transformation of other molecules. So you have the release of CO2, which is marked by letter A right here as well as NAD plus becoming NADH. And yes, I know that I didn't like briefly expl explain the labels, but that will be explained thoroughly throughout this process. Okay, so that's what happens in step two. And step three is very similar, except instead of working with citrate and isocitrate, we're working with alpha ketoglutarate now. And so what alpha ketoglutarate basically does is that um, when this is oxidized, um, a similar thing happens. So you have NAD plus becoming NADH, as well as the release of another CO2 molecule right here. Now, the step four right here um, involves GTP and GDP, and so GTP is basically produced when a um, when a phosphate molecule uh, is when a phosphate is taken off, and then uh, form and then it's moved into GDP, and so um, yes, GD, GTP is very similar to ATP in that they're both um, able to perform the same function of like providing the energy necessary for cellular work, and so you also have the transformation from ADP into ATP. Okay, so that's what basically happens within step four. And in step five, like there are a whole um, several things that happen. So yes, you have NAD plus becoming NADH, which is letter C, right? The C that appears throughout. And then you have FADH. And then when you add two hydrogen molecules to FADH, you get FADH2, which is letter E right here. And then you also have the oxidization of succinate. And succinate is responsible for um, at least two other compounds, including um, fumarate, as well as malate and fumarate and malate are more important towards the ending of the cycle. But for now, um, yeah, just know that cysteinate is a very important compound within this fifth step. And additionally, in the sixth step, the sixth step is basically the regeneration step in which um, oxaloacetate is basically regenerated. And so oxaloacetate is known as an acetyl-CoA receptor, meaning that when it accepts acetyl-CoA, these two together are able to form citrate, hence um, rewinding the cycle again. And additionally, remember how I said the fumarate and the malate that was formed earlier? Well, fumarate and malate are responsible for this regeneration process. And so, yes, the different the different molecules and enzymes that work together are able to power the whole um, Krebs cycle. And additionally, another thing is that the energy carriers that are formed, so FADH2 and NADH, they're also responsible because they're able to transport the electrons from the Krebs cycle to the electron transport chain. And in that way, uh, produce even more ATP in that respect. Thank you.